So I don't know if you could tell, I'm trying to get fancy with my editing. These are the bits we're gonna use to make our panels, doors, and drawer faces. So we're gonna make this door. This is commonly called a five-piece door, and it's just a regular shaker style. It's made of styles and rails and a center panel. All the parts of the door get the groove in it. The rail usually has the tenon on the end, and when you build these doors, the styles go on the end. Theoretically, when you open a door, that way you don't see any joints. So in this cabinet project, my rails and styles are two and a half inches wide. We need a minimum of two inches to mount the door hardware on the back. So when I make my styles, I make them the length of the opening, plus about minus a quarter inch, plus about. Length of the rail will be the opening that I'm covering, minus five inches, plus seven eighths back for the tongue, which is four and an eighth. My top drawers are gonna be solid pieces, so I'm gonna cut those first. Making them panels would have the panel be like an inch tall. Top drawers done, let's go ahead and start cutting our two and a half inch rails and styles. Make them out of maple and walnut for our exposed panels. And we made a bunch of it. Now everything gets a groove, so I set it up, and when I got it to the height I wanted, put a fingerboard in and ran them all. Yeah, I made a bunch of that too. The walnut panel is going to have a 45 degree miter in it. I cut that one first so I could go ahead and do this miter fold technique that I use on most of my corners. I have these little spring clamps. I can't even remember where I got them, but they're nice for holding miters together. Have to cut all the rails, they get tenons in them, and we go right-handed, left-handed, right-handed, left-handed, and right-handed. So the pile disappears, and I make that stack, and that stack. Then I make this makeshift tenoning sled, and I put all the tenons on all the rails. It looks like that. Not going to show you how I built every one of them, but this is the one exposed panel that goes on the tall end of the pantry cabinet. It was the trickiest because it was so big and had a couple different pieces to it. Make sure I get good glue and all my joints. Clamp it tight. Cross measure it to make sure it's square. And here's just a quick little build on one of the doors. Now when I'm doing a small job, I'll just make the couple doors at a time and I'll just clamp them up and let them sit. But this job's got 26 doors, drawers, and panels. So I created a little process with my 20 gauge pin nailer which I did in video, so I put a pin in each one of the tenons, that way I don't have to clamp it. Okay, one down, 26, no, so that one, so one down, 25 to go. And I started with the corner panel, so you don't have to watch me build all the other stuff. And of course, sanding. Round over, and more sanding. Building the walnut panel here that's going to wrap the whole Highland Peninsula. I ran every door and panel through the sand. It took hours. I leave my rails and styles fat. That way I can trim a little bit off of both sides. This gives me my perfect dimensions, makes everything nice and square. 
then a little round over. And finally, some hinge pockets and all the doors, and we're ready for some finish. Uh, no, wait a minute. We have to sand. Here's the Peninsula Island panels that I talked about with their miter fold. Creative director didn't really care for the first color, so we actually had to wipe another color on there till we got this exactly how it needed to be. Till it looked like this. I'm mixing up a two-part lacquer sealer. It's got a little catalyst that goes in here, about 2%, and it really stinks. We're gonna shoot this behind the curtain so I don't ruin my camera. And of course, gotta sand the sealer in between the coats and wipe it down with the tack rag. Sorry, can't watch me spray this. Runs the camera. But this is what it looks like when it's all done. Time to set the shop up to do some lacquer undercoater. With the 2.0 red tip. This stuff stinks. I try to keep a process when I spray edges and profiles. And then the feel. I hand sand everywhere I can, but in these little corners, this new tool really works out great. This undercoater makes it smooth as glass. And then we use this tip, which is a 1.8, spray all our finish. Keeping with the same process. Now I mark each door before I spray it. I put a number where the bottom hinge goes and I cover it with tape so I don't spray over it. That way I know where the door goes when I'm all done. Helps if you have the right screwdriver. They even fit. This white lacquer sure does give a nice finish. I really like the AccuSpray spray system. What's nice about it, you don't have to clean it up. It's disposable. That's not to say that I don't clean it and I use it a couple times. It works great for the stuff that I do. Probably wouldn't paint a car with it. Now all I have to do, mount all these doors and drawers to the cabinets. But I'm not gonna video that. Next video should be the installation in the remodel. So I hope you enjoyed our door video. So if you're interested in any of the stuff we use or the AccuSpray system, check in the links down below. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, watch those videos, and we'll see you next time.